So yeah. now this this gypsum one, how would it have been used? Any ideas? Well, it's pretty special, and to be made in stone, it's labor intensive, and it would have been, I have to think, cultic in nature. Uh, yeah. Some kind of uh, something. To, Equipment for, yeah, it's for, so elaborate. for sacrifice and uh, and making libations or per containing particular oils uh, or uh, perfumed water or even uh, wine, we don't know. Uh, sometimes you can, if a vase is completely unbroken like this, you can swirl solvents around in it and do a spectrographic readout and get some indication of what might, even oh, okay. after all this time, of what might have been in there originally. Uh, but this uh, is unusual. and. Uh, I don't know uh, what it was for, and I'd like to know. I looked for the correspondent in uh, the pottery shapes. There's a big book by Foramark on shapes of Mycenaean vessels, and I haven't found the exact correspondent for it. Okay. But the decoration you find, the overlapping, this right. complicated yeah. scale pattern that sort has of fish scales, yeah, that, that has sort of tree uh, leaf-like, uh, you know, veining. In it. No, this is quite a rarity, and I'm quite. Uh, on the, uh, there's a different pattern on the top where you've got right, the different curvilinear waves. triangles with uh, that overlap uh, and they're quite flat on the knee. And this is broken clean across, so what the knob looked like, we don't know, but it could have risen considerably higher. But this was not made to articulate with this. This is completely broken away, so it flared up like a trumpet mouth, and then whatever the diameter of this is, right. which has been where it really was. Okay. So we don't know. You don't know how high. Nope. That could well, though you could, we could make a guess based on these diameters. That's true. 